Good morning all. Uh, yesterday I showed you my PIC controlled uh, Neo Pixel lightsaber where a line of light runs up. Well I've made a very small change and it's resulted in this. It's now just a dot and I fixed uh, the endpoint error. One of these LEDs wasn't lighting up. Well now they are. That was a reasonably simple fix. I'll show you that. Uh, one of the reasons that I've changed to a traveling dot rather than a building line is because I'm not always powering this thing from five volts from a fairly capable power bank. Um, when I'm programming it, this comes out and the programmer fits on there upside down bizarrely. And I'm not sure uh, what current protection there is in here to prevent a huge current being drawn from my PC's USB port. So by switching it to this dot traveling up, then uh, the current doesn't build as all the lights light up. It's a fixed current, just one LED lit at any one time. It's not going to stress the programmer. So how did I change the program to uh, change it to a traveling dot rather than a building uh, line of light? Well, actually, it's remarkably simple. Uh, here I do a subtract of uh, one register which holds the current position on the array, the current position on these 32 pixels where I want something to happen. Um, it subtracts that from the current count when it's actually streaming out pulses. Uh, so you've got these two variables, uh, one sort of rotating very rapidly, the other incrementing up very slowly, slowly in such a way that you can actually see it. So that's the actual traveling thing. Now, when you subtract, you can do, um, well, the subtract instruction changes two flags. It modifies the carry flag. It also modifies the zero flag. So where I check that flag, which is way down here in the uh, bottom most subroutine, the one where I actually put out the uh, either long pulse or short pulse, I was testing the carry flag. Now, if you test the carry flag, uh, subtract means uh, assert this flag when one of the numbers is greater than the other number or less than, it depends which way you look at it. So that would mean that you'd have a trigger point uh, before which the lights are off and after which the lights are on. Now, instead of testing the carry flag, if you test the zero flag, so if I just cross that out and put a Z in there, if you test the zero flag, when you do a subtract, you're only going to get uh, the zero flag set, asserted if you like, um, when the two numbers are the same. So that's only going to happen once along the row. So only one light will come on at any one time. So it was a tiny change. Uh, instead of testing the carry flag, test the zero flag to get a traveling dot rather than a building up line of light. Now, what caused the out by one error? Why did uh, one LED at one end of the string of pixels, this 32 uh, string of pixels, there they are, 32 lights. Why did one of them not light up? Well, I had a misalignment between two counters. One of my counters is here. I'm just incrementing it and masking it um, so that it can't go over 1F. So that counter was counting from 0 to 1F. Now this counter is counting from 20 hex. So that's 32 decimal. 1F is 31 decimal. This one is counting from 20 down to 1. It never actually sees 0. So we've got two counters, one going 1 to uh, 32 decimal, the other going 0 to 31 decimal. They're misaligned by one count. So uh, here, rather than do a move there, I'll cross it out. I did a deck, decrement uh, file to do a sort of fudge realignment and that solved that problem. Now if I'd used um, a count here, which goes from uh, 32 to 1 rather than 31 to 0, I wouldn't have needed this fudge. But I didn't. I've got two different counting mechanisms. So there's the fudge that uh, realigned the two counting numbers so that they're in line. And now all the pixels are used uh, in the result of the program. And uh, finally, and uh, this one I'm only mentioning really because it's going to annoy programmers. And well, that's fun, isn't it? Um, how on earth do I get away with doing a subtract here, which obviously modifies the carry and the zero flag. Uh, subtract does that. Let's just have a quick look in the, um, yeah, subtract W from F. There it is. It modifies the carry. Uh, I think that's the half carry, the decimal carry. I think that is. And the zero flag. So it modifies all those flags. 
how do I get away with modifying the flags there, then going into the pixel subroutine, which does some stuff, calls the LED subroutine, which does some stuff, calls the pulse subroutine, which does some stuff, and then only checks the carry and zero flag at this point. How do I get away with going from here, down here, down here, down here, and have the carry and the zero flags still intact? Well, remarkably, all the code in this subroutine and this subroutine doesn't affect the carry flag. And that's perhaps not surprising because if you look here, the carry flag doesn't appear very much. It's there on add, it's there on the two rotates, it's on subtract, it's on add literal and subtract literal. But the zero flag appears much more frequently. It's on quite a few instructions, but remarkably, none of these instructions. So I can get away with setting or modifying the carry and the zero flags here, going down through two layers of subroutines and only checking it here. And it's still intact. It's not been altered. And that's even more remarkable because I'm using this instruction in these two subroutines, decrement file and skip if zero. Now you'd think, wouldn't you, that decrement file and skip if you get a zero result, if the decrement causes that file value to go to zero, you'd think that that would somehow involve the zero flag, but it doesn't. It's absolutely remarkable. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Decrement file and skip if zero doesn't set the zero flag. It doesn't use the zero flag. And similarly, increment file and skip if zero doesn't involve the zero flag. It's quite astonishing. So here, for example, where I do decrement file, it decrements the file. Say that results in it going to zero. The zero result is then uh, seen somehow and a skip is executed um, if there's a zero and not if there's not a zero. And all of that happens without the zero flag being involved. It's astonishing. So yes, I suppose from a programmer's perspective, um, affecting flags here, dropping down through two nested subroutines and checking the flags uh, this far away from where you set them is pretty awful. You don't have to make many changes to these subroutines and you'll completely screw this system up because uh, quite a lot of instructions do use the zero flag. But I just like the fact that I can get away with it. It's fun. Now this traveling dot I think will actually make uh, a better Christmas decoration uh, than a building line, particularly if we connect it to um, a circular display. So let's disconnect uh, these wires from here and connect them to this. Now, just got to be a bit careful because the signal line is at one end here, whereas on this strip, it's in the middle. So uh, I've got to get my VCC uh, and ground and signal correct. Mm. So I need to do this upside down really so that I can uh, see the legends. Right, signal goes to the top like that. Uh, VCC in the middle. Yes, it is. Red's in the middle and ground's at the bottom. So that should do it. And there it is. But that's only um, going once and then there's a gap and then it's going again. And I've just worked out why. Because we have 32 pixels here and only 16 on the ring. So I need to make some changes to the software. I think if I count from 10 hexadecimal uh, rather than 20 there, and if I change this mask so that it only counts uh, from 0 to 15 there, then those two changes will mean that it'll work for a 16 pixel array. Let's uh, plug the program out and, and try that out. Right, so here it is, uh, Neo Pixel Rotating White Dot for a 32 pixel strip, I suppose I should change that to 16 if I'm uh, making changes to make it a 16. Now, where are the two points where I needed to change it? Yes, here we are. Um, I need to change this mask, so instead of going to 1F, which is 31, I'll go to 0F, which is 15. And instead of counting down from 20 hexadecimal, which is 32, I'm gonna count down from uh, 10 hexadecimal, which is 16. Uh, that should do it. Project, uh, quick build, 
Oh, it's still called 32 dot. That's going to confuse everyone. I should have called it, I should have saved it as a new name. Uh, 16 dot. Uh, that successful programmer. Oh, I haven't selected my programmer. It's a pit kit 2. Is that going to fire up? Yes, it says pit kit 2 ready. Let's program that. And it's working. Oh, yeah, that's working. So that's uh, rotating like crazy. I could change the speed of that actually by changing the delay length. That's how I'm controlling the total loop time. Uh, now that's rotating clockwise. I quite fancied building two of these actually uh, as Christmas decorations. One rotating clockwise and the other rotating anti-clockwise. I think that's a simple change as well. Uh, there in the animate, instead of incrementing the LED position, so this is an increment, uh, let's try a decrement. Right, so here it is, uh, in animate, instead of, uh, oh, I am decrement, uh, decrementing, uh, so yeah, the code on my printouts is old. Well, if I change that to ink, so that's an IN, IN, increment the LED position, uh, that should go the other way, so let's um, quick build that and then program it. Uh, right, so let's hit the program button while this is actually running. Uh, there it is. That stops briefly. And it's going anti-clockwise. Fab! So yeah, that's going to make an awesome Christmas decoration when I have one of these little um, USB plugs plugged into a power bank. Uh, that's sort of glued onto there and a little pick chip uh, soldered on and a few wires. Uh, Christmas decorations with these moving lights. It's just going to look awesome. Cheerio!